Now at nine, a Pineville woman enters a plea in the kidnapping and murder of a pregnant Arkansas woman. Plus, how a grant will help improve broadband internet access for a couple Southeast Kansas counties. And Marion Days brings tens of thousands of visitors to Carthage, Missouri. We'll see how everyone is housed during the event. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. A plea today in a horrific area kidnapping and murder case that drew national headlines. 44 year old Amber Waterman of Pineville, Missouri had been accused of kidnapping and killing an Arkansas woman in order to take her unborn child. Today, Waterman pleaded guilty to one count of kidnapping resulting in death and one count of causing the death of a child in utero. The victim was Ashley Bush. She was 31 weeks pregnant when she was lured to a meeting with her killer in Maysville, Arkansas, back in October of 2022. Waterman had contacted Bush through Facebook, offering the possibility of a job. Now, after her disappearance, authorities responded to reports of a baby girl who was not breathing in the Pineville, Missouri area. The child died. Waterman first claimed she had given birth to the child but later admitted it was Bush's baby. While searching Waterman's property, authorities found the burned remains of the mother. An autopsy indicated Bush had died of penetrating trauma of the torso, and the death was classified as a homicide. Waterman now faces a mandatory sentence of life in prison without parole for each death. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us now with a first look at weather. Well, of course, hot outside for us today. Temperatures made it up into the mid 90s during the afternoon, which is a little bit above where we should be for this time of the year. But of course, the humidity was high. 94 is where we topped out. 78 is where we started. Average highs 91. The record 107 set back in 1986. All right, look at our temps still. We're still into the mid 80s. It's almost dark outside, even upper 80s to near 90. Once you get out toward Yates Center and also Neotache, and we still have heat indices into the mid 90s. So it's going to be a warm, hot, muggy, sticky night. Excessive heat warning in effect again for us as we go into the daytime hours tomorrow. We had a few scattered showers earlier this evening, but these have all dissipated, so we're pretty quiet for tonight. Heat gets worse. We're going to look at that here in a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. A lot of Kansas families could soon have easier access to broadband internet. $10 million in grants have gone towards internet service providers for broadband acceleration in rural Kansas counties statewide. Nearly a million of that goes to some area counties. Now reporter Melissa Alexis has the details. For not only our community members to access information, but for our business members as well. Robin Shelley is the Iola Area Chamber of Commerce Executive Director and she's seen the struggle of unreliable internet connection in her own household when her daughter was taking an online class. She was right in the middle of an exam and it just stopped. And so she's stressing already for a statistic, she's stressing for an exam, and then to have the internet just completely stop and lose everything, which meant, guess what grade she received on that exam? A zero. She says lack of reliable internet connection makes it difficult to access services like telehealth. She also says it makes it difficult to even Google something or order merchandise, which has been detrimental to small businesses in Allen County. The small business that are either home-based business, which we have quite a few at the chamber here, or even our, our downtown merchants around the square, um, they rely on internet for marketing, for communication, for social media. Quickcom is a Kansas internet provider and they received two grants of $950,000 from the state of Kansas towards connecting Coffee County and Allen County to high-speed internet. He says some Allen County families have difficulty using streaming services, joining Zoom calls, or even accessing their emails. When we were doing an interview um, with the state, we had um, quite a few residents and community leaders that were willing to be part of this and, and partner with us on this important project. and. They were having a difficult time just logging into Zoom. Sofer is the Director of Business Development at Quickcom, and he says this will benefit cell phone signal as this service helps connect cell phone towers. He says Quickcom will tackle this issue as well. Very serious problem in many of our rural communities, and so to being able to take care 
of an entire swath of area of over 90% of residents and being able to provide them fiber connectivity at an affordable rate. Sofer says they hope to implement this service by the middle of 2025. Reporting in Allen County, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Quickcom will provide 332 premises with broadband technology. And this grant supports a Kansas initiative to support rural revitalization. Well, the Carthage Water and Electric Plant celebrated new renovations to its transmission line. The plant today hosted a ribbon cutting ceremony. Officials say the 69 kilovolt transmission line renovations will help them keep the power on for the thousands of customers they serve. It has a lifespan to it and uh, this was getting closer and closer to its end of life and uh, for us we felt it was proper to move forward with the replacement of this so that we could get additional capacity off this line um, and, uh, and then have uh, and stabilize our future growth potential uh, in the system. During the ceremony the plant also recognized a pair of retirees who worked on the original transmission line back in 1961. Well, a local fire department is getting a little boost courtesy of the wind indirectly. Crawford County, Kansas commissioners have voted to help the Hepler Fire Department pay for a fire truck using money received from the Jayhawk Wind Farm in Hepler. In the past, we did a sewer, sewer upgrades, uh, some other upgrades. This year, when they went through and they were looking at replacing a fire truck for that area, the mayor, Doug Harris, in that area reached out to me and said, is there any way that we utilize that money for part of this fire truck payment that they had um, purchased? Commissioners voted to provide nearly $36,000 from the wind farm fund to help pay for a fire truck replacement. Well, coming up, with temperatures staying high even overnight, we'll have some tips to stay safe after dark. Well, Crawford County Mental Health today cut the ribbon on a new location for their children's services. The ceremony featured a newly renovated office on Broadway in Pittsburgh and a meet and greet with the staff. Visitors had a chance to learn about children's services available to the community, as well as new youth mental health and crisis services. Over the last year, we've grown um, considerably for the amount of clients. Um, that we've seen, uh, clients we've worked with. Uh, we've developed great partnerships with um, local partners, schools, different things like that have been great in, in working with us. And I think as a result of those partnerships um, and our expansion of services, we've seen more clients come seeking what, we, what we're able to provide. Children's services are now at 710 North Broadway. Well, we won't find much relief from the heat with warm nights lined up for us over the next few days. Nick Kelly looks at the way those warm nights can impact our health and what you can do to keep your cool. Our heat advisories and excessive heat warnings will continue across the Ozarks through Thursday evening. While they're in place for our hot and humid afternoons, Dr. Barbara Bumberry with Mercy says people shouldn't discount the nighttime warmth. We always think about the heat during the day when the sun's out and shining, but even during the evening or um, late into the night when the temperatures are still high, you're still at risk for heat-related illness. Day or night, Bumberry says the ways to cool down remain the same. Air conditioning, central or window unit is your best option. Ceiling and floor fans can also help. You can also turn to ice and water as easy ways to cool down. If you've got ice packs, you can uh, put the ice packs on that person uh, around their arms, their groin area, their, their neck areas that will help cool them down. If you're at home, taking a cool shower, a cool bath would be a way to try to cool down a little bit. For those who exercise in the morning or in the evening to avoid the worst of the heat, you should still take proper precautions to keep yourself as cool as possible. Load up on extra fluids. Uh, Again, lightweight clothing, uh, you, some of those quick dry shirts or shorts, and then just watching for those symptoms of too much heat and knowing when to stop. While the definition of too much will vary on the individual and what you're doing, there are plenty of ways to keep cool, pay attention to your body, and avoid the worst of the heat until we can improve things by the weekend. Doug is next with a complete look at your forecast and later kids in Carthage get a lesson on basketball from the Oklahoma City Thunder.
Well, of course, it turned out to be a hot one for us today. Temperatures all the way up into the mid 90s for most of us. Some areas uh, push 100 degrees as we got into the afternoon hours, but it looks pretty good right now. Here's a nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam. Of course, we're looking downtown Joplin off toward the northeast through downtown. But look at our temps. They're still up there. It's 86 in Stockton, 85 in Neosho. Benita, 87, 89 in Chanute. We have 90 in Neodiche. Sedan is sitting at 90 degrees. Let's go outside. Here's 7th and Range Line sitting at 85. Southerly winds are backing down just a little bit. But those are still going to stay somewhat breezy as we go through the overnight hours for us tonight. All right, dew points hanging out kind of 70 to about 73 degrees, which puts us into that muggy to soupy range. And then, of course, when our temperature is warm in the afternoon, that humidity goes up as well. And uh, we get those high heat indices. Southerly winds, still a little bit of a breeze. We got south winds at about 5 to 10 to 15, some gusts higher than that, but still through the night. At times we're going to have winds gusting 20 upwards to about 30 miles per hour. Even on Wednesday evening, still winds are going to be kind of gusting 20 upwards to 30. The winds start to back down a little bit on Thursday, but still kind of breezy. But tomorrow will definitely be the breeziest of the days over the next couple days. Excessive heat warning in effect again. Everybody in the magenta and the orange you have heat advisories in effect, so excessive heat warning. You're talking heat indices near 110 or greater. And then in the orange, we're talking heat indices above 105 degrees. Had a few scattered showers out there earlier this evening. Those are gone. Not much going on now. We just have ground clutter from the radar sites, but pretty much clear skies. And that's what we're going to see as we go through the overnight hours. Let me walk you through time. I'm going to stop tomorrow morning. Look at our overnight lows, near 80. So warm, warm start. As we go through the morning into lower 90s, by the time we get to the noon hour, and I think most of us about 97, upwards to about 102, once you get into our western counties. We are gonna attract some thunderstorms out to our west tomorrow night, but as they work in, they pretty much fall apart. We may get a random storm or two late tomorrow night, but then chances again, trying to pop up once we get into early afternoon hours on Thursday as the front kind of sinks through. So we are going to have chances for a few scattered thunderstorms as we get into late Thursday. And then again, kind of popping up for us Thursday night into Friday morning. All right, alert days for the next couple days, just due to the extreme heat index, 99 tomorrow, 101 is what we're going to top out on a Thursday. And then we hang mid to upper 90s all the way into the weekend, but at least a, a hair better as we go into Friday and Saturday. Yeah, wow. It's going to be hot for a couple more days. It is, definitely. Yeah. Well, for the rest of the week. Yeah, all right, thanks, Doug. You bet. Well, Marion Days kicks off this Thursday in Carthage, Missouri, and this year organizers are expecting more than 60,000 people to attend the annual Vietnamese Catholic Celebration. Many of the attendees are already in town, with the Carthage community opening their doors for a place to stay. That's this lamp. I don't think I got this lamp. Diana Fields is making the final preparations for her house guests this week. She's hosting three families during this year's Marion Days celebration. The annual Vietnamese Catholic event draws in tens of thousands of visitors to Carthage, Missouri, and they all need a place to stay. All the hotels in the four cities around here are packed. The annual pilgrimage packs hotels and converts Carthage homes like fields into Airbnbs for the week. Thousands even choose to brave the heat, camping in tents in neighborhoods surrounding the campus of the Congregation of the Mother Co-Redemptrix. Father Paul Tran says Marian Days is not just about religion, it's a family reunion. Right in the middle of the United States, so people from everywhere that, you know, like here, the extended family cannot stay in one place, so they, it's hard to visit everybody, but they make this as a vacation. They've been here, and it's usually their relatives. That way we know that they're vetted through Airbnb. Field says she and her husband started hosting in 2018. But there's big followings of Vietnamese people in San Diego, it seems like Texas. We've had some from Colorado, from Iowa, just from all over the country. 
Um, I was in high school during the Vietnam War, so I don't really know a lot about it, and it's been interesting to hear them talk about when their parents, because these are like second generation Vietnamese that came over from Vietnam uh, during, to escape the war and everything. And they just talk about how, you know, they came here, their parents worked really hard, they were met with a lot of obstacles, prejudice, you know, because the war was very controversial. But they watch their parents work really hard and create a life here. They have a strong belief in God, strong family values, and we can relate to that. A cultural experience field says she gets through hosting, something she plans to do for years to come. As long as we're here, um, you know, because we're really in a convenient place for them, and it works out really good. Marion Days runs through Sunday and is open for everyone to attend. Well, coming up, racking up the debt. The federal government continues to accumulate debt at a record-setting pace. I'm Lydia Hu with Fox Business. We'll take a look at the numbers coming up. Retail giant Target is offering customers a recycling discount just in time for that back-to-school shopping from August 4th through the 10th. You can bring in used denim to any Target store and receive a 20% off coupon for new denim. The recycling is limited to five used items of any brand in the store. The move is part of a growing consumer interest in reducing waste. Our appetite for fast fashion is greater than ever. There's more brands, there's more incentives. The algorithms are, are buying into, are giving right into our need to fit into trends, yeah. but I do think that people are more aware of what's happening, and so they are asking the brands to start doing a little bit better, mm. um, and so that, you know, maybe we can all work together to have a more sustainable fashion industry. Target previously had a car seat trade-in program. It's not clear how the retailer plans to recycle the denim. Maybe they're going to make a big quilt. Well, the U.S. national debt just surpassed $35 trillion for the first time in history. Fox Business correspondent Lydia Hugh breaks down the numbers. $35 trillion in debt. That's $104,000 per American. The milestone comes just months after the U.S. eclipsed the $34 trillion threshold in early January 2024 while the $33 trillion mark was reached in September 2023. The bipartisan Peter G. Peterson Foundation says the U.S. pays about $2 billion a day in interest payments. Republicans say the policies and spending from the Biden administration have compounded the debt problem. It's because of all the ridiculous pet pro projects from this administration and all of their handouts to special interests, particularly in the green energy lobby, that have put this nation so far behind. And, and the result of that has been 40-year high inflation, a tripling of mortgage rates, and today's cost of living crisis. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget believes the U.S. needs a combination of spending cuts and tax raises to help with the problem. Republicans agree with cutting spending and Democrats agree with raising taxes. Meanwhile, President Biden and Vice President Harris continue to push for more spending. We have made so much progress, historic progress, on everything from gun violence prevention to taking on the climate crisis. And this November, we will win again. In the first three years and five months in office, former President Donald Trump added $5.9 trillion to the debt. In the same time, President Biden and Vice President Harris added $6 trillion. In New York, I'm Lydia Hu, Fox Business. Up next, we'll learn about the incredible woman who just set a skateboarding world record with no legs. Well, a woman born without legs now holds a big skateboarding record. The Guinness Book of World Records says Kanye Sesser recently completed the longest handstand on a skateboard, 19.65 seconds. Now, Sesser, who grew up in Oregon, is not only a pro skater, but a Paralympic athlete, actress, and model. She says breaking the record was a life-changing moment for her and that it's incredible she can have a positive impact on younger people. Good for her. Well, 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports is coming your way. The new head of the Secret Service testifies before Congress about the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. 
Plus, the Senate passes a bill aimed at protecting children on the Internet. You're watching the four states most watched news. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Lawmakers continue to press for answers about the security failures leading up to the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Fox's Rebecca Castor has the latest from Washington. There is no question that this was a monumental failure by the Secret Service. They had one job and they failed. The interim head of the Secret Service facing a fierce line of questioning at a Senate hearing on the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. Ronald Rowe was thrust into the agency's top position just days ago after former director Kimberly Cheadle resigned following a disastrous House hearing last week where she was unable to provide lawmakers with answers to many of their questions. Rowe looking to avoid a similar outcome. I've heard your calls for accountability and I take them very seriously. I cannot understand why there was not better coverage or at least somebody looking at that roof line. While the acting director provided more answers than his predecessor, there's still a lot of questions, including the gunman's motive. It also seems no agency wants to take the blame for letting the former president take the stage, even though a local SWAT team clocked the shooter as suspicious about two hours before shots were fired. He was identified as being suspicious by local law enforcement. And nothing happened. Well, I know that local law enforcement was attempting to locate him. Should have been somebody in the roof. There should have been communication with the local police, which there wasn't. So that's a bad thing. Mr. Trump will sit down with FBI agents on Thursday for a victim interview, a routine part of criminal investigations. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. The U.S. The Senate took social media platforms to task today, to voting in favor of bipartisan legislation to protect children and teens online. Senators overwhelmingly supported the bill, calling this first major tech reform legislation in decades a, quote, new era of accountability. Parents of children who died by suicide or have otherwise been harmed online have been advocating for change for years. Young people will take back control over their online lives. Parents will have tools to safeguard those young people. They will be able to disconnect from the addictive features and opt out of those black box algorithms that drive at them relentlessly. And it requires these platforms to go through an audit every single year to make certain that they are complying with the law. House members return to work in Washington in September. Well, Vice President Kamala Harris is edging closer to a VP pick with the field of possible contenders now narrowing. Doug Luzader has more from Washington. Well, the Veep stakes speculation is growing with at least two possible candidates saying they're out, but there may be a dark horse in the running. And President Biden steps off of Marine One last night after returning to the White House. And among the questions on the way in, who will his vice president pick as a running mate? We're talking. We're talking, he said. And clearly the Harris campaign is doing a lot of talking behind the scenes. Among those considered to have been on the short list, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer says she's not being vetted now, and North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper says he's out. Among those left standing and considered to be top contenders, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and some recent talk about Michigan Senator Gary Peters. Democrats continue to unite around Harris and a new line of attack. Republicans are, they say, weird. Well, it's just plain weird. And there is something weird about these guys. Trump's hair is weird. These guys are just weird. But that talking point aside, we may see an actual debate between Trump and Harris. And while there are questions about venues and dates, Trump tells Fox he's open. If you're going to have a debate, you got to do it, be I think, before the votes are cast. I think it's very important that you do that. So the answer is yes, but I can also make a case for not doing it. And Trump will travel to Chicago tomorrow to speak at the National Association of Black Journalists while Harris heads to a campaign event in Atlanta today. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. A bit later, how field trips for shelter dogs benefit both animals and humans.
Well, of course, it was a hot one outside today. Temperatures, they climbed most of us mid to upper 90s across the region. Still very warm outside for us right now. Nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Tower Cam, we are looking downtown Joplin off toward the north and to the east right through downtown. But look at our temps. We're still up there. It's 86 in Carthage, 84 in Anderson, Miami, 87, 88 in Chautauqua, Pittsburgh is checking in at 86 degrees. Even if we go outside here, seventh and range line sitting at 85. Southerly winds have backed down a little bit, but still going to be a little bit on the breezy side as we go through the overnight hours for us tonight. Also, our humidity is up there. Dew points ranging 70 to about 73, 74 degrees. So it kind of puts us close to the top of the scale here. So we're in that muggy to soupy range, and that's where we're going to sit as we go through the next couple days. Still southerly wind kicking in 5 to 10 to 15 miles per hour. We're still getting some gust higher than that, and we are going to have some gusts 20 upwards of 30 at times tonight. And then again on your Wednesday by Thursday, they'll start to back down just a little bit. Excessive heat warnings in effect once again tomorrow along the north of I-44 and then in the orange. That is a heat advisory in effect, and this is all due to our heat indices. They're going to be way up there as we get into the afternoon hours. Had a couple little showers pop up earlier today. These are gone. All you're seeing out there right now on the radar is just some ground clutter, and we're going to stay nice and quiet as we go through the overnight hours for us tonight. Let me stop in the morning. We're sitting mainly upper 70s to lower 80s across the region. As we go through the morning hours, a few little clouds kind of shooting through should go into lower 90s by noon. And I think most of us anywhere from about 97 upwards to about 101, 102 once you get into our western counties. Thunderstorms tomorrow night to our north and to our west. As they drive in, they should fall apart, but we may get a few scattered ones in here late tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Then Thursday, we'll see a few scattered thunderstorms try to pop up late morning into the early afternoon, but temperatures again on Thursday. Most of us upper 90s to near 100 degrees once again. Also, heat indices are going to be out there over the next couple days. All right, 79 to start, 92 by noon, high temp, 99 heat index tomorrow. The way it's going to feel to your skin about 107 to about 112 across the region still way up there as well. Thursday heat indices about 106 to about 112 once again. So if you are going to be outside, make sure you take the proper precautions. Alert days Wednesday and Thursday due to those high heat indices. And then uh, we hold into the upper 90s all the way through the weekend back to triple digits once again next week. All right. Well, not much of a break for the weekend, no. but I guess it's a little break. Not really, yeah, it's bad. What yeah. I like is that there aren't any 80s in the nights anymore. You got the down to 79. Same yeah. thing, but Same it thing. looks better. Yeah. It's mentally better. <laughs> All right, thanks, Doug. <laughs> well, coming up in sports, Team USA brings home several more medals from the 2024 Olympics. Plus, the Oklahoma City Thunder bring their youth camp to Carthage. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Hey, welcome into sports. I'm John Dales. Early this morning in Carthage, dozens of young basketball players get the chance to learn from the Oklahoma City Thunder at their hustle camp, which has been sold out for months. The Oklahoma City Thunder youth basketball camp takes place at the Carthage YMCA this morning. The Thunder bring their drumline, dancers, and several youth basketball coaches. The camp is divided into two sessions for different age groups, three hours apiece, and helps young players learn the fundamentals of the game, as well as have some fun. Campers leave with a water bottle, t-shirt, basketball, and a ticket to a Thunder game for the upcoming season. The Joplin Outlaws continue their road trip tonight. On Sunday, they lost both ends of a doubleheader to the Shadowcats in Sherman. After a day off, Joplin plays another road doubleheader tonight in Texarkana. Both games were supposed to be just seven innings, but the front end of the doubleheader goes into extras. Outlaws prevail in that contest. They win it 10-9. Now, there's not much downtime between the two games. The second end was supposed to begin at 8.05, but 
but just got started about 20 minutes ago. They're in the first inning of the second game in Texarkana. They're still scoreless. To Major League Baseball, Cardinals play the Rangers tonight after losing 6-3. Last night, the Redbirds respond emphatically this evening with an 8-1 victory. St. Louis chases Texas starter Max Scherzer out of the game early. He leaves after just four innings pitched, allowing three runs. Rubber match of the series is tomorrow afternoon. Over to Chicago, the Royals just swept the White Sox 10 days ago. They look well on their way to another sweep. Kansas City beats Chicago 4-3. Once again, Bobby Witt Jr. comes up big for the Royals. Last night, he had a go-ahead grand slam in the eighth. Tonight, he gets an RBI single to tie it in the eighth. Game three of the series is tomorrow. Over in the NFL, this has been making waves online today. The surprise onside kick is officially dead. As part of the league's new kickoff rules, teams have to announce beforehand if they intend to attempt an onside kick. Now on top of that, onside attempts cannot happen until the fourth quarter, and only the team that's trailing at that point can perform them. Now for fans that are upset about this change, the good news is, so far, this rule is only in effect for the 2024 season. Switching gears to the 2024 Olympics in Paris, plenty more action today. Here are some of the highlights. The U.S. women's gymnastics team, led by Simone Biles, wins gold once again. U.S. men's soccer blanks Guinea 3-0 and advances to the knockout stage. That's the first time they've done that since 2000. U.S. women's rugby seven medals for the first time after scoring in the final play of the game against Australia. In the pool, the United States wins a silver and a bronze in the women's 100 meter backstroke. Then two more silvers in the 800 meter freestyle and the four by 200 meter freestyle relay. And on top of that, Gerard Kansas native Derek Mine finishes in fifth place in men's trap shooting. That's it for sports. We're back with more news after this. A unique experience popping up at more animal shelters across the country is letting volunteers take pups out on field trips. The outings are helping to bolster their chances of being adopted while also bringing along health benefits for the animals and their temporary caregivers. Fox News' Ted Linder has the story. Turns out helping man's best friend can also do a whole lot of good for mankind. Okay, okay. A growing number of animal shelters nationwide are encouraging volunteers to take dogs out of their kennels and on special field trips to parks, beaches, and beyond. Once a week we come up here and we take a dog out for about two and a half hours. At St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center in New Jersey, staff say these outings offer dogs a critical chance to get exposure to the outside world. Volunteers fill out many report cards after each excursion giving insight into things like how the pups performed on car rides and their behavior around other dogs and with children. According to data from the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, roughly 3.1 million dogs enter U.S. animal shelters every year. But these doggy field trips can actually help increase a pup's chances of getting a forever home. Many of the dogs that go on field trips do end up getting adopted, um, and there's some data that shows that they get adopted at, at a higher rate. Animal welfare experts also point to data that shows how breaks from shelter life help to reduce a dog's stress levels. This while also providing emotional wellness to volunteers. We love animals, and uh, you know we love helping the animals, and and they help us. You know, we, and they make we you just... feel good. Yeah. I mean, look all those kisses she gives you. St. Hubert's conducts about 2,300 adoptions a year. At least half of those animals went on at least one field trip. Ted Lindner, Fox News. Well, coming up, we'll get a preview of M. Night Shyamalan's newest thriller, Trap. A new mystery filler by M. Night Shyamalan is on the big screen this week. Fox spoke with the filmmaker and star Josh Harnett all about trap as it heads to screens. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin. This whole concert, it's a trap. 
M. Night Shyamalan's thriller Trap is about a serial killer at a concert with his daughter, which is set up to catch him. The film stars Josh Hartnett and Shyamalan's daughter Salika as Lady Raven. The filmmaker has said it was the fastest script he's ever written. I consider Salika a, a world-class artist, and I said, you're one of the rare people that can write, produce, and perform an entire album by yourself. You can create all this. Can we aim it towards a narrative? And can we make a movie around the, 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 these songs, an album? And like they did with Purple Rain in the 80s, it's so difficult to do. And, and, I, and so I kept thinking about, well, what could take place? How could we get music in? And I said, maybe it's at a festival, maybe it's at a concert. And I was like, wow, maybe an arena. And, and, and somehow we, don't we can't leave the arena. Hartnett shared what it's like in a Shyamalan mystery with audiences guessing along. It's more in the, uh, the releasing of the film that people start to really t dissect it. I know Knight has incredibly specific things that he's trying to pull off, and there are some Easter eggs in there that people who love Love Nights movies will 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 see. He adds, he just focuses on the character. And being a fan of Nights' work, I was aware of all the sort of like scrutiny that the film was going to go through. But I, but you can't think about that on the day. Otherwise, it's too much pressure. It's a darker role for the actor, who says he's always looking for something different. So right now, I don't know what this next one is going to be. I have a movie coming out that's like an action comedy. Actors are only as good as the directors they work with. So if there's a great director who's going to do like a musical maybe or something like that, maybe that'd be a nice tw twist. Somebody help me! In Hollywood, Ashley Devorkin, Fox News. And that's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of Capybara twins at a zoo in England. Aw. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.